So far we have seen a number of examples of recursive methods and many of them seem to work mysteriously if you like, like magic. The question is how do they actually work? Uh, before we examine how recursive method work, let us first of all review what happens in normal programming situation without recursion, yani where a method called another method. Okay, uh, if we can understand that, then we can easily also understand what happens when a method calls itself. Now, when a method A calls method B, the current execution scope, of course, will focus to that of method B. At this point, the running time system, if you like, forgets the information about method A. Uh, including the following local variables because of course local variables are only visible while you are executing the method so the system has left method A it is now in method B therefore all local variables for method A will be forgotten at this point okay similarly it will forget about the parameters of method A uh, it will not even remember what is called the return address because within method A there is a point where method B is called. So when we finish method B, we're going to continue from that point. That point is called the return address. So again, normally this point will be lost because we are not no longer in method A. We are now in method B. Okay. Now, after method B is executed, this is the system will, will go back to method A and continue the execution. The question is, how does the system remember the necessary information it needs to continue the execution of method A? This is the important point. Because we said once it leaves method A, Everything about method A is lost or is forgotten. It is now in method B. So it has finished method B. It needs to go back to continue the execution of method A. How does it recall the necessary information needed to continue the execution of method A? So actually what happens is that the system has a special area called runtime stack where it will keep information about the methods it is currently executing okay so we say here the runtime system creates what is called an activation record which is also called stack frame for the methods that it is executing and it will save it in a special area called runtime stack. Okay, uh, so the necessary information we will see that in detail in a moment. But this activation record will contain the information I listed in the last slide, like the values of local variables, the parameters, the return address. All of them will be created in a record called activation record, and it will be saved in the runtime stack. So when the system finishes executing method B, it will now go to this runtime stack, recall this activation record for method A, and it will guide it to know how to continue the execution of method A. This is the idea. Okay? So that's what we are saying here. So when method A is called, uh, say by method uh, by the main method suppose we call method a from main method an activation record for a is going to be created and saved in the runtime stack okay when method a calls b again another activation record for method b is going to be created if method b calls c the same thing it, it continues like that all right so this is how the system actually, you know, 
record and read this necessary information so that it knows how to continue the execution of a method when it comes back okay now an activation record for a method remains in the runtime stack for as long as the method is executed once a method is done its activation record is going to be deleted so for example we say man calls a a calls b and b calls c so so far we have three activation records uh, or maybe four actually in in the runtime stack we have one for the main one for the a one for the b one for the c all of them are still active but after finishing method c then the activation record for c is going to be deleted okay we're going to go back to method b after finishing with method b the activation record for method b is going to be deleted like that so this is the idea so now what do we have in us inside an activation record activation record usually contains the following information the values of parameters for that particular method or function the values of local variables the return address so when we leave this method and go to another method the point where we left the method is going to be recorded in the activation record okay uh, this is this is this will be in the activation record of the call method okay so that when we are leaving that method we know where to go back uh, in the method that call that one okay uh, there's another information called dynamic link this is a point at the caller's activation record okay because the caller from the called method we need to access the caller's activation record okay for example to store the value of the return value okay for the method so one of the information stored in the activation record of the called method is the activation record for the caller okay because after we remove the activation record for the called method we're going to go back now to the activation record of the caller so we need a reference to that this is called dynamic link we shall see a diagram showing all this information which will pro probably make it more clear the last information is the return value uh, so this is for method that are not void so there will be a space in the activation record to store the return value okay so at least these five things are stored in activation record for each method that uh, is currently still executed okay uh, so the runtime stack along with the activation records actually provide a mechanism for the system to keep track of the execution sequence and allow the system to recall the information needed to continue the execution of a method uh, upon returning to it after executing another method okay let's take an example to make this more clear uh, in this figure, we are assuming that the main method, okay, call a function f. So, of course, once you start the program, there will be activation record for the main method itself. So, there is an activation record for the method the moment you start running the program. Now, suppose within main you call a method f then there will be an activation record for the method f you can see among the things i just listed parameters local variables dynamic link return address return value so at least this information are stored in the activation record so this from this point to here as, as shown by this uh, uh, braces is the activation record for method f now suppose f calls method f2 
so again another activation record is going to be created for f2 with the same or similar list of uh, information if f2 calls f3 the same thing this is what happens so when f3 is done with we have finished executing method f3 the activation record for that will be deleted and the system is going to go back to method f2 how do we continue executing method f2 no problem because we now have all the information we need to continue the execution of method f2 and so on and so forth so this is basically how the uh, runtime system keep track of the execution sequence the next question is what about for recursive methods where a method is not calling another method but instead it is calling itself okay what happened in that case the answer is exactly the same the same as in normal methods that is each recursive call creates a separate activation record storing the state of the method at that particular point okay so there is no difference whether the method is calling itself or it is calling another method to see this let us take an example say so suppose the recursive power method is called from main as shown below okay so main calls power with 5.6 for x and 2 for n okay remember the power method takes two two arguments x and n okay uh, for demonstration sake uh, we're gonna put numbers on the left to indicate the address of statements okay so in this case let's assume this instruction is address number 136 okay and this is the power method again assume these numbers are the addresses of each of these statements okay we highlight these ones in red because they are actually going to be used as return addresses you see here when we say y equal to power uh, 5.6 and 2 we are actually going to leave main and go to the power method so the question is when we come back from power where are we going to continue the execution it is at this particular address okay basically we're going to do this assignment okay so the same thing here in the power method we are highlighting this in red because there is a return address there and you at this point let's say we come in with n as 10 we're gonna leave the current call where n is 10 and make a call with 9 okay so the question is when we come back from executing with 9 where are we gonna continue we're gonna continue in this line 105 okay this is the idea so we're gonna demonstrate this as a diagram to show you how it works uh, first of all let us see how the method itself will work okay the following shows the tracing of the method so from main we call power with x as 5.6 and n as 2 so we are in power with x as uh, 5.6 n as 2 we will start executing power uh, we will check is n equal to 0 no it is not it is 2 at the moment okay and so we're gonna go to the else part so the else part says return x times power x n minus 1 so if n is 2 n minus 1 is going to be 1 so basically we're going to make another call until after that call we cannot compute this expression so we are leaving the current call to go to another call therefore another activation record is going to be created for this second call there was an activation record for the first call because uh, you see here when we leave main and call power 
there will be an activation record created for this first call with these values as the values of the parameters so x is 5.6 and n is 2. now when we call when we start executing that we're going to make another call this time with n equal to 1. so another activation record is going to be created we're going to leave the current call and go and do that call okay so this is what is being shown here we're going to have a call with n equal to 1. Uh, x doesn't change of course so it is still 5.6 so assuming we come in with one is it zero no it is not zero so we're going to go to the else part again here there is another call with n minus one so if n is one n minus one is going to be zero so there will be another call and therefore there will be another activation record created where x is 5.6 but n is 0 okay so it will again leave this call and go and do that call this time however when we examine the value of n we will see that it is indeed equal to 0 and for that there is no need for any recursive call we are simply going to return 1 so you can see here the result of calling power with n equal to 0 is 1. So now, with this answer, the current execution, which is execution number 3, is done with. So the activation record for that is going to be deleted. And we're going to go back to call number 2. Okay. So now, we know the result of this call. It is 1. So we come multiply with x to complete that call number 2. And 5.6 times 1, of course, is 5.6. Okay? So that will complete call number 2. And therefore, we can now go... So, that, so the activation record for that, again, will be deleted. And we go back to the first call to power. Okay? In that call... We get the necessary information from activation record. For example, we know the value of uh, n at that point is 2. The value of x is still 5.6 and so on. So it's going to try and multiply the result of the second call, which was 5.6, times x. So it's 5.6 times 5.6, which is 31.36. So now that first call is done now. So we can send this result back to men. So you can see that men will actually assign y the value of 31.36. So this is basically how the recursion will work. In terms of activation record, this diagram shows you what actually happens. Okay. So the first call, as you can see, once we start the program, there will be an activation record for the men. Okay. It will contain at least the local variable y there. Okay, so we call power with 2 and 5.6. So among the activation record for the first call to power will be the return address of the main. Where do we go back after finishing this call? We're going to go to this address which if you recall is one of the statements in the main where we are doing the assignment okay then we have the values of the parameters 2 and 5.6 and then there is here what is called stack pointer so this is where we are in terms of the runtime stack this is the current active record okay now that first call is going to make another call with n as 1 so there will be an activation record for that one as well but this time the value of n is not 2 is 1 as you can see also the return address is not 1 is not 136 but 105 okay so this is the idea now that second call will again trigger another third call okay this time with n as 0 okay same return address but the values of the variables are different 
Okay, so you can see how the recursion keep track of all the different values of the parameters across each call. So now that uh, n is zero, we can put a value for the return value. You see, all the while the return value has been a question mark, meaning we don't know yet. We don't know yet, but now we know. If it is, if n is zero, the answer is one. Okay, so there is a value put in the return value uh, position in the activation record. Okay, so at that point, this activation record is going to be deleted, and the stack pointer will move to the one for the second call, second call to power. Sending this value one as the result, so now it can now compute return value at that point. It's going to be one times x. Uh, which x is 5.6, so we're going to have 5.6. Okay, so again, that will complete that call. So that activation record is deleted, and we're going to go back to the first call. And at this point, we'll be able to compute the return value for that first call. Okay, it's going to be the value obtained from the previous call, which was 5.6, times x. So 5.6 times 5.6 is 31.36. So again, this call now is done. So this will be deleted, and this value will be sent and assigned to the variable y. So basically, this is how recursion uh, works. You can see there are many activation records created, and uh, we will talk about that when we talk about the efficiency of recursive method uh, in a moment. Okay, so now that we have seen uh, how recursive method works, how do they compare in terms of efficiency with iterative methods? To do that, let us look at two versions of the same method. Okay, the power method, it can be done using loop, so that's what we call iterative method, iterative power here, using loop and also using recursion. This is the one we have seen before. Let us try and compare it with the one with a loop. Now you can do, of course, power using loop very easily. Uh, so we're going to receive the same input, double x int n. So we define a variable result, and we just use a for loop. Okay, uh, the for loop will initialize result to x, and then it will keep repeating as long as n is greater than 1. What, what will it do? Okay, so result equal to result times x. So after doing that multiplication, it will now go and decrement n by 1. And then check. Is n still greater than 1? If yes, still multiply result by x and save the result in x and then decrement n, and so on and so forth. So at the end of the loop, return result as the answer. This is basically how to implement the, uh, the, the power method using loop. Now the question is, how do you compare these two methods? Which one do you think is better and why? For one thing, it is very clear that the power version is more intuitive. In other words, it looks more natural relative to the problem. Okay, we all know that if n is zero, we just return one. Okay, otherwise, we say power x n minus one times x. This looks more natural, more intuitive compared to this one. This one is like the way the computer works. You have to put your mind like a computer to understand this. Okay? So this is also much easier to understand. Okay? Uh, it doesn't uh, require additional variable like, like results. So you see that the iterative versions, usually they need more variables than the recursive one. Okay? The code usually is also shorter just one if statement we need, okay? Iterative versions are usually longer. 
the recursive version is also usually easy actually to implement because you just follow the recursive definition implement it as if you are defining it recursively okay but here you have to think in the way the computer works before you can implement this method okay so i have listed some of these good advantages of recursion compared to iteration in this slide okay it says what do we gain if anything by using recursion instead of a loop these are some of the things we gain one as i said earlier the recursive method is usually more intuitive in other words it looks more natural more related to the problem than the iterative version okay the iterative version is like you are thinking the way the computer will work but here just as if you are translating the problem directly in its natural way okay it increases program readability as we just saw there definitely the recursive version is much easier to read and understand what is going on compared to the iterative version and therefore it improves self-documentation there is no need to uh, add comments to explain the code the code itself is self-explanatory what it is doing okay it is easy to code much easier to code than iterative version and finally it is generally shorter we will see several examples of this later uh, especially when we come to trees you will see that many of the methods are uh, very short even though they seem to be doing a lot of work okay so these are some of the advantages of recursion uh, but is there any disadvantage as we know in real life nothing is for free so wherever there is uh, advantage usually there is some disadvantage this is the issue see however if coded correctly the iterative version is generally more efficient both in terms of time and memory the iterative version is more efficient why is that as we have just seen looking at the several examples already discussed there are a lot of activation records being created because when you make a call you have to delay uh, the final answer until you finish another call so that will make an activation record to be created that call again has to be delayed until another call is done so an, an activation record is going to be created so you may have several activation records created in the runtime stack what are you using you are using memory you know to save these activation records not only that you are also spending time creating these activation records and deleting them when you are done we don't need to create all this activation record in the in the iterative version and therefore the iterative version is usually more efficient in terms of time and also in terms of memory okay the question therefore is why do we need to use uh, recursion essentially because of some of these uh, issues we listed here some of these advantages we shall see for example when we come to trees some of the methods are very very difficult to implement in terms of iteration but the recursive version allows you to implement them very easily okay so that is one of the main reason why we need to do recursion because they simplify the coding you can implement methods very easily in, in certain scenarios using recursion especially in the case of trees that we're going to see so this is the idea to make the code easier for us to implement we use recursion rather than uh, loop uh, this we will explain more in the second part of the of the lecture on recursion but this is the end of this particular lecture thank you very much